Hello and welcome to the Two Green Shoots how-to video. Now I'm just in one of our little herbaceous edible borders here and today we're going to be talking about cuttings or how to stock your garden for free because we all know plants are in a bit of a shortage at the moment but today I'm going to show you how you can restock your own garden taking cuttings. Now what you want to do is obviously if you've got your own mother plant these this here is actually our mother plant and we will take cuttings from that or you can ask your neighbours. So we've got three types today. The first one is a vegetable. This is the Dorbington kale, variegated version. It's a perennial form. So it will live for a good few years and it will keep cropping. It is not immune to the pests and diseases. So you'll still have to protect it, but it just keeps pumping out the leaves for the years to come. The second one is the type of berry. It's a type of fuchsia berry. Not many people know about it, but in the South Americas, they will make a jam from this or they'll put it into muffins or little pastries, little mini pasty pastries. They are delicious. I would search around to try them because they do leave a little bit of a peppery taste. Some do, some don't. This is one called Vilbachen, if that's pronounced how you correctly. It's bred to be edible from the Agroforestry Research Centre, so it is a tasty berry. The third one is a herb. These are all easy ones to do. I don't want to like confuse you, they are easy. Here's a herb, we're going to be doing Moroccan mint. So you get your standard English mint, which is lovely, or, you know, not doing anything against it, but Moroccan mint is far superior. It is very, very aromatic and it's got great flavour. So, first things first, equip yourself well. Good snips. Although these ones uh, look small, they're very appropriate for my hand. They fit my hand perfectly well. And they're good and sharp. You need them to be sharp. You can use a knife um, if you feel confident, a nice sharp knife. But I always use snips or second tiers. Clear plastic bag keeps the moisture in, we don't want them drying out. So, we look for good material. On this Dormanton kale, it's literally, you're looking for these nice side shoots that come from the main stem look. This, this is how I do all my plants. And when we cut, I'm gonna make a cut just above a leaf node, a leaf joint. So I want that to push out again, I don't wanna harm the plant. And I'll just take that one there, look. I'll do it at a slope away because I don't want the water to sit in that bud and rot, so it'll be sloping away from it. So I'll just take a few look. When you've made your cut, put it straight in the bag. We don't want it drying out. So the fuchsia is relatively the same. So again, I've got all these lovely shoots coming off. I'm going to leave some of those because I want a good framework. But some of these are coming out where I don't want them. So again, I'm going to prune just above a leaf node or a leaf bud there, look straight across because they equal leaves again there's no flowers on this one ideally no flowers we don't want the energy going to flower production again straight into the bag they're really good berries so the last one is the moroccan mint here really lovely herb and again i'm just going to take it above the leaf buds this is softwood all this year's growth So we're at the propagating bench. We've got our cuttings. Take one out at a time. We don't want them to dry out again. Already see there's a lot of moisture building up in that bag. So we'll keep that sealed. We've got the cutting, the fuchsia. And what I'm going to do is cut below those leaf nodes now. Just straight across, just like that. I'm going to take those bottom ones off. Then I'm going to trim off these side leaves. If we don't want moisture to escape from this plant. We want the energy to go into its roots. I've got this organic rooting hormone powder just to help it root. You do not need much. So there we go. Just a little little dab. And you need a little dibber for this. Pencil works just fine. Make a little hole. Ideally if you've got four cuttings, one in each corner because that's where the heat is going to be. But this is just as fine. So I am going to insert that two thirds of the way, almost up to those leaves look. You see that? And then I'm just going to gently press with the pencil around just to secure it in place and so it is making contact. So when that's done, bag over the top on a light place, not direct sun because you don't want to fry the plant. But somewhere warm and light. Okay, so the next one is the mint. Very much the same. So again, 
just below those leaf nodes, straight across. And I'm going to take off all these leaves because, again, we, we want the moisture to stay within and the energy to go into root production, not keeping those leaves alive. So I'm just going to take most of those leaves off, look. And leave the top into the hormone. Your pencil with a hole, and it goes two thirds up to those first set of leaves. Gently press with the back of the pencil. Around. And the final one is obviously the Dorbington kale, very much undervalued. These all came from a mother plant, and they're direct clones. When you take a cutting, it is a direct clone. For an example, if I was to take a seed from an apple, I am inheriting thousands of genetics and that could turn out to be any fruit when that grows from seed. But if I was to take a cutting, exactly the same, identical. So just bear that in mind. These are direct clones. So this has all come from one mother plant. So again, just gonna cut the bottom there because we've only got, just take that off, tidy it up. Just there, look. Don't waste the material, it's always good for chickens or like that. So once all your cuttings are obviously done, just keep an eye on the moisture levels. Once they're watered, you don't want them to dry out. So we don't want them sat in water, like boggy conditions. They want to be kept slightly sort of moist conditions, a little bit of weight there, but do not allow to dry out. Once you've done your cuttings in two to four weeks, keep an eye on them. Make sure they don't flower. We do not want them to flower because the energy will go into flowering. Have a look. They are putting on lots of new growth. These are ones I did three weeks ago. These are fuchsia and there's nice new growth. And the one certain way of telling, other than that, sometimes a bit deceiving, is to look underneath. There's roots. Okay, so then uh, once they're rooted, and you've seen the roots there, we, we want to prick them out, we want to move them on. So the best way to do is grab a fork, remember not to put it back in the cupboard, keep it in the polytunnel or the glass house. And it works perfectly well, it's got a dibber and a way of teasing out those roots. So I'm just gonna work my way in, just gently, in it goes. I'm just going to very gently lift. Just very gently. Just grab it by the leaf there. We don't want to break the stem. You see those roots perfectly well in that corner there. That is a new plant. So get your compost. Don't fill it all the way up. Just about a third to start off with. Plant. It's in there like that. And then just work the compost around. Give it a little gentle tap on the table there just to make sure the roots are in contact with the compost. Remember to give it a drink. So once you've given it a drink, put it back on the table, leave it for another two weeks. And when you see roots popping out the bottom, move it outside into a nice warm place. Now if frosts are due, which it will be unlikely around sort of late May time, but it's not unheard of, bring them back in because they'll get damaged. So thank you for watching. And if you want to get in touch, please email us. We are here at the Garden Room Imagination. And most of all, I hope you enjoy taking cuttings and restocking your garden. Do you need to do that again? <laughs>